What's going on, guys? It's your boy Sleazy here. And look, for the longest, I have not given a single damn about Star Wars. As far as I'm concerned, there's only six movies. Some people disagree with that. They'll try and lump in seven. Some people will be three. I think we can all agree that prior to Disney, the movies were actually pretty decent. Compared to what we're getting now, Disney has utterly destroyed Star Wars. It's nothing but woke agenda corporate nonsense. But there's always been somebody somewhere trying to say, this is the best Star Wars ever. And people are saying the Acolyte's going to be, you know, the next great Star Wars saga. Except for, well, they're coming out themselves and saying it's not Star Wars. And here we go with this headline. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy says she told the Acolyte creator, you've written a great Star Wars show. Now go write a Leslie Headland show. What? Well, one, it was not going to be a great Star Wars show. And you're actively saying you, you don't want it to be Star Wars. But, I mean, I guess that would explain the the terrible CGI BS whip that they tried to steal from uh, from some books there, but completely failed. Because it's not how they're described in the books. But, you know, they're like, no, we're just going to make a laser whip because cool. So here we go. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy has revealed that in an effort to help breathe new life into the all but completely dead franchise, I mean, look, anybody who's going to say it's not dead, they couldn't even crowdfund. A, what was it? A $3,500 crowdfund for the, the Reva lightsaber? Hold on. It, fact check me. I'm going to fact check myself. Reva lightsaber crowdfund. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I have to correct myself. 5,000. 5,000. They got less than 3,000. They got less than 2,000. Only 1,400 people were like, we totally want this new Star Wars stuff. You absolute morons. Anyway, back to the uh, the topic at hand here. She directly advised the Alkali creator and showrunner Leslie Headland to make the upcoming Star Wars series uniquely hers. And I guess that's why we got the, uh, you know, girl boss power. All the dudes are terrible. Kennedy divulged her part in the Acolyte's creation during a recent interview given to the New York Times books, Barnes, and promotion of the series. Yeah. Oh, my God. Recalling her previous discussion with Hedlund, the Lucasfilm boss told Barnes that after reading early drafts of the series script in 2019, she replied to the showrunner's work with the declaration, you've written a great Star Wars show, now go write a Leslie Hedlund show. Well, this is going to be an absolute disaster for Disney. Again, they're probably going to waste hundreds of million dollars again on a show that's not going to make money again. Like, how many how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I mean, I guess, well, I mean, Bob Iger is technically in charge of everything, but <laughs> I still have my conspiracy theory, theory that uh, Kathleen Kennedy is still a dude. <laughs> That was a joke, Disney. Don't be a bunch of sniveling bitches and try and sue me. To this end, Kennedy then revealed that her faith in Hedlund's storytelling was inspired by her play Cult of Love. The drama piece centers on a Christian family whose relationship with both each other and God began to unravel during one particular love Christmas gathering, and in particular, the thematic dissection of sibling bonds. I've never seen it, but I assume it's absolute garbage. It's about her personal experience explained kennedy and it was just so well done and incredibly emotional which means it was wasn't emotional at all it was girl bossing so hard that the girl bosses had to girl boss some more girl boss and it was just so well done incredibly emotional i remember reading that and saying leslie this is exactly what you should tap into as you write the story for us really because we saw the trailer and it looks boring as hell Providing insight as to how exactly she let her personal life influence the Acolyte's narrative. There, there it is. Personal life. It, it's going to be her saying how good of a girl boss she is. I have a very strained relationship with my youngest sister, and I feel like one of the reasons is the strains that we both see each other as the bad guy. Well, it's because you probably are the bad guy, Leslie. How's your relationship with your father? I'm willing to bet not good. And if I was going to tell a story about bad guys, she further noted, it seemed to me that place to start would be a familial, familial relationship where one person is adamantly convinced of her correctness and the other person is so adamantly convinced of her correctness. 
So it's going to be girl bosses girl bossing to save each other from girl bossing. That's exactly what it is. There you go. There's the entire plot. It's going to be somebody pretending to know what Star Wars in, throwing in random member berries, where the girl bosses girl boss each other, only to turn out to be friends in the end. Briefly speaking to our own thoughts on the show's direction, Star Amandla. Is that a real name? I thought it was Amanda. Amandla? Stenberg added, I, look, Bounding's made some typos before. It wouldn't surprise me. But I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leslie really was driven by emotion. Okay, this is all like this is all like self masturbatory speech that they're talking about themselves. This is this is disgusting. Is there anything that's not them doing their their celebration here? Meanwhile, is how to the acolyte will play in the larger sandbox of the Star Wars universe. Hedlin explained during the April twenty twenty three Star Wars celebration what I wanted it to introduce to fans is the concept to. How do you reconcile the Jedi at the height of their power, the galaxy at the height of the Age of Enlightenment, the peace, and who George says they become at the top of the Phantom Menace? Well, we already have. Okay. Could someone in the comments correct me if I'm wrong? But they said it's been over a thousand years since they've seen a Sith. But now there's this whole like Sith arc in that time frame. That the, the entire Jedi Council just forgot about. You know, completely ignoring how old Yoda is. And they probably had would have had some hand in this if this had actually happened. <laughs> like, how, how are you rectifying this? Oh, right. Everything before Disney Star Wars is in canon to you assholes. Now, look, we, we may disagree on whether 1 through 6 are Star Wars or you know, four through six or one through three, which one's better. It doesn't matter at this point. The only thing that actually matters is that we destroy everything Disney has made. That's the only thing that matters now. And I don't think anybody who is watching this Star Wars objectively can disagree with me in that. Disney has utterly ruined the entire Star Wars franchise and even, even George Lucas himself has said, yeah, this isn't, this isn't what Star Wars is supposed to be. He's come out numerous times talking about how Disney's taken the wrong path. He, he never would have done this with Star Wars, all sorts of stuff. So when the original creator comes out and said, this is not the way it's supposed to be. This is not the way. And Disney's like, shut up, George. George. You fucked up when you sold it to Disney. But anyway, guys, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments section on this one. Unless there's some drastic change in the Disney Star Wars universe, I'm probably not going to cover Star Wars again. I know there's been tons of articles and news over the last couple months, and I think I've maybe done one Star Wars video. It's just because I, I don't care. Star Wars is actually a dead franchise to me. But I, I thought this was funny how much Disney... uh you know, pats their own ass and says they're doing a good job. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comments section. While you're there, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this one out. And until the next one, guys, be easy like sleazy.